All right, so here's the plan. We are going to take all this stuff and turn it into a gravity filter. Um, what we got here is a 11.5 liter bucket, uh, fabric bucket by Seattle Sports, PVC free, comes in a little bag. Uh, got, I don't know, there's about five feet of silicone tubing. You'll need two of these Parker Liquifit um, fittings. It's quarter inch to quarter inch. One's already stuck in this and the other one will be stuck in uh, in this little guy, which you'll see all about later. A wiffle ball, one uh, bulkhead fitting, a Parker Liquifit bulkhead fitting that uh, for quarter inch. So in other words, oops, I just did that backwards. I wonder why that went in so easy. So this will stick into this like that and it's got it and you just sort of push on the little gray thing there to release it and you need some clear silicone uh, usually I get the stuff that says um, if it's for aquariums then it's pretty much I mean the rule of thumb is that it's safe for people uh, apparently saltwater fish are really sensitive to chemicals and solvents and whatnot so if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. So a little bit of clear silicone. I've got a quarter inch socket on an extension that I'll be using to melt the hole for this bulkhead fitting. And uh, a couple of these squeezy clamps. I like to use two when I'm actually using the, the gravity filter because uh, this, this longer, the five foot tube will stay on the bag when I go to fill it and I can, when I'm carrying a full bag of water, it's not just running out because I leave the, the filter back at camp. So that's, I think, all the pieces we'll need. Uh, oh, I use one of these quilting things or sewing, I don't know what they're called, but uh, usually I'll take a scrap piece of fabric, in fact even this time I will. I'll get this set up and I'll make a couple of practice burns. I got uh, also I have a little blowtorch here. I've used my stove in the kitchen every time until now but I'm going to use this guy today. Anyway you heat this up real hot and you melt a hole. You get one shot so I recommend practicing. Alright so here's the bucket out of the bag. Uh, this is probably just a touch. I, I made one of these for myself last summer. Uh, this one I'm making for my sister. And I used the, uh, this is Seattle Sports. I used Sea to Summit last year. And this bucket seems every bit as good and it's half the price. Uh, so what I'll do here is I'll measure up two inches from the bottom up to here. Uh, that just gives plenty of room. I like to put it in the side, believe it or not, versus the bottom. And then uh, also when you do melt your hole in your bucket two inches up from the bottom, you want to do it in line with the handle. And that will become apparent why you want to do that later. But do do that. And uh, that's, I'm going to set this up next to, uh, to melt that hole. Okay, now you can see I've got the ring on there, and uh, I've got a mark that's two inches up from the bottom. I went from the edge of the, the overlap in the seam, not from the edge of the black, but from the edge of the inside. Um, anyway, hardly matters. It's not, we're not launching a rocket ship here, we're just as close, close as close enough. So, again, in line, there's my mark and I'm going to heat up that thing. Remember, you get one chance. You want to make sure you're clear on the inside. You're not going to melt an auxiliary hole through the, the bucket somewhere because it's touching itself in there. And uh, that's what we're going to do next. I'm not going to show it because I need to concentrate on it, but you can imagine me heating this thing up with a blowtorch, getting it pretty hot. I mean, it needs to be significantly hot. And then uh, one straight go, keep it 
in and out fast as you can get a nice clean cut and um, that's it. it all right well there you have it uh, holes melted in it then you just take your bulkhead fitting here and uh, should go on there nice and snug and put the inside inside and just lock it down um, what I like to do is wipe this area, clean it inside and out. Uh, again, leave this ring on it because while the silicone dries, it'll be nice to keep it tight. Um, I clean this area with some alcohol just to make sure there's nothing on it and I get a good, good clean bond with my silicone. And these, these fittings have a midpoint with a little groove in it there. So I try to keep the, the middle of the fitting right in the middle of the of the bag there so you're just going to be squeezing that dude in between there just like that have a little silicone on each side to get just to get a good tight seal um, and that's it there you have it that um, bulkhead is sitting in there with some pro or um, silicone on it and I'm just gonna let that dry for the next 48 hours or something I'm, I'm not sure if that's what this recommends yeah allow to cure 48 hours Okay, now with any sort of luck, um, this thing's been in there 48 hours now. I'm going to leak check it in a minute here, but hopefully we got it right the first time. So that, the bulkhead fitting's in there now on the side. Um, I like a five foot long piece of tube to come out of the fitting, so let me get that out of the way. You just put in one of these barbed fittings. Um, and uh, the liquid fit fitting, it'll plug right into that. Um, for the other side, you take a wiffle ball and you just enlarge the hole in the bottom of it just enough that you can stuff this in there. And here's one already made up. So you got your fitting on one end. This will be inside of the bag. I sewed up a little uh, pre-filter and it's just a simple bag if you will. That's going to go over that and I take some mason twine and just tie it on and it's it's not elegant but it's effective. And also I use I got these little pieces that are it's just a piece of silicone tubing that's about half full of silicone and when I'm out in the field just to keep make sure that the water doesn't leak out of this in between uses like if I'm hiking or paddling to a different spot, I'll just use these as plugs to make sure the water stays in there and it stays primed. So really that's all there is to it. Uh, you just have to mount that bulkhead fitting onto a bag of your choice somehow um, and use the appropriate fittings to plug into it. And it's that's it. Piece of hose on one side, a uh, wiffle ball inside if you're going to do a pre-filter. Except, well, the wiffle ball by itself doesn't filter anything. You do need to wrap something over it, so probably a coffee filter would work. Like I said, I just use a piece of bandana that I sew into a little bag over it. Uh, you can tie a little piece of bandana around that. Just you know, anything that you can do to be a pre-filter pre will take care of it. And then uh, there's this string here that I use to adjust the angle inside of the, of the wiffle ball inside of there. And that's just a simple hook, hook it onto a loop and it sets the angle. So really it's a pretty simple system. There's, it's not like I had to sew up this bucket or something. And then you got your shutoffs on your hose. One here, the filter would go in and then another shutoff on the other filter. Here's the filter right here. So it would be just like that. And in practice, in use, I would leave this one open and, and control the flow with this one so that the, a nice pre-charge stays on the filter. Um, you've got five foot of head pressure here which usually gives you pretty darn good flow. The top of the bucket is open so it's a vented system. It, it doesn't get air locks or bubbles that can't be worked out for the most part. So I think uh, it's a pretty easy system. You're going to give up a little bit of weight for this heavy bucket. Um, sea to Summit actually makes a sill nylon bucket so it'd be even lighter but I, I just kind of like the durability so that's it that's a, an easy peasy gravity filter and um, go out and make one I guess <laughs>